After having AWS account, just to log into AWS account. After logging to AWS account, services EC2 services EC2 this is the dashboard of EC2 go to the instances in my system already two instances are running Totally two instances are running. Let us create a new instance. Let us configure whatever Java environment required. Please observe. EC2 instance is nothing but a remote system in the cloud. A remote system in the cloud EC2 instance in the cloud one system in the remote through internet you can able to access that system EC2 in the cloud in the remote through internet through internet we can able to access we want to create one system in the cloud which has to run in the cloud anyone can able to access that system through internet that is nothing but EC2 in the AWS in the right top you can see launch instances launch instances You can give any name to your system, any identifier. I'm just giving test to one. I'm giving a name as a test to one. Any name you can give. For this system, what is the operating system you had to choose? Several operating systems available. Choose any one operating system. I'm going Red Hat Linux. Select Red Hat Linux. While creating a remote system, we need to choose one operating system. I'm choosing Red Hat Linux. Come little down. There are a lot of parameters available to configure. Memory, processor, lot more configurable steps are there. But we don't require to bother about all those configurable parameters. Mainly AWS admin will be concentrating on which parameters required for the production environment. So each and every property having a lot of significance. We are the developers, we are not the admins. Developers, no need of bothering about, bothering about all these properties. So you can go far, you can go far with the default values, all the default values, no need of changing anything. So only you have to create a new, a key pair, new key pair. You can see. Create a new key pair. Okay. 
just to create a key, new key pair. Click on this. It is asking the name. You can give any name. It is only for security purpose. It is only for the security purpose. In my system, I already used test 1 and test 2. So now I am entering test 3. Just to give any one identifier, any one identifier. Then remaining things all are default only. RSA and PEM. Default, no need of changing anything. RSA and PEM. Only one identifier. I just given test three. Just to click on create key pair. While clicking on create key pair, it generates one file. That file you have to download and you have to keep that file in the safest place. With that file only, with that file only, we can able to connect to EC2 instance. I already said that it is for security purpose. One file will be generating based on the key whatever we are supplying. That file will be downloading now. Once you click on this, file will be getting downloaded. That file you have to save in the safest place. Same file you have to provide while making a connection to EC2. Click on create key pay. Choose the location. Remember this location. Test 3. Choose the location and remember the location. I am just choosing one folder. The file name is a test 3. Extension is a PEM. So no need of bothering about what is containing in this file. It is only for the security purpose. Without this file, no one can connect it to your EC2 instance to do the administrative activities. In order to do admin activities, we require this file. You have to remember this file path. Now you can click on launch instance. Launch instance. Instance created successfully. This instance is nothing but a remote host, a remote system. In the cloud environment, we created one system, one remote system. In the cloud environment, we created one system. You can come to the left to bo uh, left to top, left to top instances. There is a breadcrumb instances, EC2 arrow mark instances, arrow mark launch instances. So click on instances to see all available instances. To see all available instances. In my system, totally three instances are there. I created test one instance in our session, in the current session. You can just check it out, test one. This is the new instance which I have created now. You can see under status check initializing. You have to wait. Till you get two out of two checks passed, you have to get a message like two out of two checks passed. Just to keep refreshing till you get two out of two checks passed. Test one is an instance which I have created now. It's just initializing all instances. 
showing over here. In my dashboard, three instances are there. Test one is one instance. which I have created just now. Now I got a two by two checks parcel, two out of two checks parcel. So please observe, this is the message you have to get. Now instance created and started successfully. Instance created and started very successfully. Test one instance. This is the instance ID. After name, you can see instance ID. Click on that instance ID to see all the configurations related to this particular instance. In order to see all the configuration about this particular instance, click on this instance ID. There are several parameters available, even with multiple tabs. To provide more information, they have used multiple tabs. Every information about our current new instance, you can see over here. So this instance is displaying in the dashboard through ID. Again, let me go to the dashboard of instances. In the instances, you can see instance ID. This is the test one instance. So click on this instance ID. In this window, this is a completely the current instance configuration. Lot of parameters are there with multiple tabs. Lot more parameters with multiple tabs. Among all, a very important one is public IP address. You can see in the top middle itself. In the top middle, there is a public IV, IPv4. IPv4. By using this public IP address, client can connect. In order to perform any admin activities like installing softwares, configuring softwares, we required, we required public IP address. You can copy this public IP address. Copy public IP address. This has to specify in the Mobiles. Client should mention this particular IP address. Client should mention this particular IP address. <laughs> so, for all latecomers, I created one more instance. You can see instance name XYZ. It is under initializing. Under initializing. You have to wait for some time till you get status check as two out of two checks pass. You have to wait for some time. Instance just created. It is trying to start. You need to wait till you get status check as Two out of two checks pass. So refresh the browser.
still it is initializing. Definitely it takes one or two minutes. Initializing. Now you can see under XYZ, two out of two checks are passed. Instance is ready. Every instance having a unique ID. You can see under instances listing, first column is a name, second column is an instance ID, instance ID. You can click on instance ID to see every configurable parameter of particular instance. Let me click on XYZ. XYZ is a newly created instance. This instance I created for all latecomers. Totally two instances I have created. So every instance having a unique ID. If you go to the unique ID, you can see every every parameter you can also modify whichever parameter you want so generally the total operating system including hardware <coughs> everything is displaying in this particular window operating system configuration hardware configuration everything with the multiple tabs they provided several configurable parameters several configurable parameters <coughs> now among all these parameters public ip address is very important public ip address is very important through that public ip address only client can connect to EC2 instance to do any administrative activities. In order to do any administrative activities, we require this public IP address. Use this public IP address. So in the current session, I created two instances. One is a test one, other is a XYZ. I'll show both how we can connect from the client. <coughs> so client we are using as a Mobax. I already said AWS account is a mandatory and Mobax also mandatory. I'm assuming everybody having a Mobax. Open Mobax. If you don't have a Mobax, it won't take more than one minute to do download and install. You can just quickly download and install. This is the Mobax term. If you don't have, please quickly download and install. It will not be taking more than one or two minutes. You can see left to top, left to top, there is a session. Left to top, there is a session. Click on the same.
left to top, there is a session. Click on the scene. So we will be making a yes, yes, hitch connection. So we don't require to bother about what is the type of yes, yes, hitch connection. So please observe, we always require to do something as a programmer. We don't require to bother about what is going on in the configuration. Only administrators will be taking care of each and everything. So we are the programmers. We have to do the step rather than considering what is the significance of that configuration. Administrators, their job is understanding each and every configurable parameter. Click on SSH. Under SSH, you can see remote host. Whatever public IP address you copied, place the same. Public IP address. Let us go back to AWS window. Let me go to the test to one. The test to one public IP address is different. Let me copy test to one. I'll show both. I'll show both. I'm just copying test to one. This is the test to one instance public IP address. You can see the copy window here, sorry, copy button here itself. In all instances, test to one instance, under test to one instance, public IP address. Click on this, public IP address. Public IP address. Copy this. Place the same. This is the first step. Second step, you need to check specify username. Check specify username. Specify username. Specify username. You are getting automatically default in the angle bracket. You need to modify ec2 hyphen user this is the default username this default username varies from one type of operating system to another type of operating system please remember ec2 hyphen user is a default username for the red hat linux for the red hat linux for the red hat linux default username is ec2 hyphen user e EC2 hyphen user for the Red Hat Linux. We choose it Red Hat Linux only, which is why EC2 hyphen user, EC2 hyphen user. EC2 hyphen user. Then <clears throat> come to the advanced SSH settings. Advanced. Click on advanced tab. Advanced SSH settings. You can see use primary key. Sorry, private key. Use private key. Check on use private key. Check on use private key. After checking use private key, in the same text field, in the right side, you can see one browse button. You can observe my mouse moment. 
in the same text to field right side there is one browse button click on this browse button select your pm downloaded file i already said you need to remember the place where you are downloading in my system i downloaded to one folder aws friday for test one instance i choose the key pair as a test three for test one instance i choose the key pair as a test three click on open without this file mobax or putty cannot connect to the mobax system please observe this file is mandatory this file containing some key pair authentication configuration now click okay <coughs> so while connecting first time it is giving this type of window click on accept that's all connection established connection established from this mobax sitter we connected to ec2 instance which is in the remote that to in the cloud in the cloud in viran in the remote just to check it out what is the present working directory pwd pwd present working directory you can see current user is ec2 user you cannot log in with other than ec2 user default user is a ec2 user so maybe administrator knows how to create a additional users so we are not administrators so we don't require to bother we can keep using default user the default user is ec2 user <clears throat> let me close this window let me connect to xyz instance xyz instance so click on session top left session ssh remote host for the xyz instance whatever public ip address is there whatever public ip address go back to aws window go to the instances click on instance id of xyz instance id of xyz copy public ip address copy public ip address copy public ip address now come to the mobax come to the mobax check on specify username i already said username always should be ec2 hyphen user the default username for the red hat linux is a ec2 user then advanced ssh advanced ssh use private key use private key you can click on the right side browse button in the text field itself there is a browse button click on browse for xyz whatever pm file is option whatever pm file select this click okay accept 
Now check it out. Present working directory PWT. You can see. CT use. For both the instances, for both the instances, we made a connection from the mobiles. We made the connection from the mobiles. Now, <clears throat> let us try installing all the required softwares in both the instances. In both the instances, I will try to install. I will try to install required softwares. Java environment softwares. Required softwares. Java environment softwares. Required softwares. Java environment softwares. First and foremost one, we need to install WZ. Please option. We need to install WZ. I'll just type the command over here. It will be visible. sudo yum install WZ. M is a predefined command. It's already available. Use that M command to install WZ. Use the sudo. Sudo is required to mention you are a super doer, super user. Sudo is a command for authentication. Super doer. M is a command to install. We are trying to install WZ. We are trying to install WZ. Copy, control C. Run. sudo m install wz is this okay type y the center WZ is installed. So with this command, we can able to download any software by using WGET. By using WGET, We can download any softwares. Let us download JDK latest version for Red Hat Linux. JDK latest version for Red Hat Linux. So for that purpose, you need to copy the link from the Oracle website. You need to copy the link from the Varakil website. Go to the Varakil, everybody. Varakil.com. Click on products. Varakil.com. Click on products. You can see Java. Click on Java.
go to the download Java. Under download Java, you can see Linux. Java 19 Linux. X64 RPM package, last one. RPM stands for Red Hat Package Manager. So we have a Red Hat Enterprise Edition Linux in our cloud system. We need to download JDK for Red Hat Linux. You need to copy the last link, everybody. The last link. This is the link for Red Hat Linux. Control C. Copy this. Yes, backside. Use sudo command. Use wget dimension the URL. This is the command we have to run to download, to download JDK software. It is for downloading, inception, it is only for the downloading. Installation purpose, again you have to use M command. Wget, Wget is only for downloading. Always mention sudo for every command to get the authentication. I'm copying this. Before running this one, just to type ls. ls stands for list. Listing, listing, ls. Listing current uh, current directory members. To clear the screen, go for Control L. To clear the screen, go for Control L. Control L. Again, type ls. No members. No members in the current directory. What is the current directory? Our user directory. EC2 user. No members are there in the current directory. Now, paste the command whatever compose. By using wget, it is only a downloading. wget, it is only download. Download, wget. Now you can see ls. There is one file. You can copy the same file. Just to select. Copy the same file. Let us use m command. m command. Something like sudo m install whatever you copy. RPM file also we can install to m.
RPM file also we can install through yum. By using yum command, we can install. Control C. sudo yum install the name of the rpm file. So don't try typing the names. Always copy to avoid a typo error. I already showed after ls, we are getting a file. Just to select this file, go for right click and copy. Now right click and paste. Click OK. Let me copy a single line. Control C. Right click and paste. This is the command. sudo onwards till to rpm. Is this okay? Right, why? Yeah. So please observe sudo space m space install space rpm file. Now, control L, trigger Java C space hyphen version to check whether installed RPM. See, while installing RPM file, automatically updating path also. We don't require to update the path, automatically path has been updated. Both Java C command and Java command, both are running successfully. JDK setup is ready. It is not a difficult, I am not repeating again. It is simple. All the steps I performed in front of you. I will show the places from where you can copy the URLs. No need of typing. While typing, there is a chance of making a mistake. Let us move to the second software, MySQL. Installing MySQL. MySQL installation is much more simpler. There is a recognized service to the MySQL. Just to type this command sudo yum install MySQL hyphen server space MySQL. <laughs> sudo yum install mysql hyphen server space mysql this is the recognized service for the mysql yum command it can install like it already installed wget mysql hyphen server space mysql MySQL hyphen server 
space minus square. Copy. Control C. Same you can mention here. Pseudo M install MySQL server MySQL. Center. Is this okay? Type Y. MySQL installation done. It's very simple. Server starting, sorry, server installation got over. Now we need to install, sorry, we need to start. Start the MySQL server. sudo service MySQL start. MySQL D is a service name. So try triggering this command. In order to start MySQL server, you need to run the service. You need to run the service. You need to start the service. That service name is MySQL D. MySQL D is a service name. You need to start MySQL D. Control C. Run the same command. I'll just let it. Pseudo service MySQL D star. Now you can check it out whether it is really started or not. What is the status? Sudo MySQL D. Status. Pseudo space MySQL D space status.
copy Small change in the command. Sudo service MySQL D. Please modify. Two service command. We started MySQL D. Now we are finding out what is the status. You can see the last line started MySQL database server. MySQL database server installed and started. Let us open MySQL client to create one database. Let us open MySQL client, MySQL client to create one database. Sudo. is not required mysql hyphen u MySQL space hyphen u space root. It's a default username in the MySQL is a root, password is a blank. Through this command, we can open a MySQL client as a root user with a password as a blank. As a root user, this is the default user. We don't require to create this user automatically default user root as a default user for that root user the password is a blank password is a blank mysql space hyphen u space root mysql client is opened in the same command prompt mysql client is opened in the same command prompt. Let's go for show databases. In order to see all available databases, in order to see all available databases, Go for show databases. Show databases. Copy. So by default, MySQL database, sys database to information type four databases are there, we can create our own database very easily. Let me create our own database. Create 
database, I'm choosing database name as a lot. You can choose any name. Create database, name of the database. <clears throat> you see. Then, here database is now you'll be getting five databases, including LAR. <clears throat> Same database we will be using while developing server side application. You can create the tables, whatever you wanted, you can do. Now, exit from the MySQL client. Exit. Exit from the MySQL client. Second software, MySQL also ready. Second software, MySQL also ready. Let us move to the third one. Tomcat server. Downloading and installing Tomcat server. <clears throat> Go to the tomcat.apache.org. Tomcat.apache.org. tomcat.apache.org Put the tomcat 10, not 11. The latest production version is 10 only. Put the tomcat 10. Under Tomcat 10, under binary distribution, under binary distribution, you can see core. Under core, there is a tar file. Tar.gz, tar.gz.
தார் தார் ஜீஜன் ரைட்லி தாபி லிங்க் அட்ரஸ் எவ்ரிபடி ரைட் லிங்க் காபி லிங்க் அட்ரஸ் காபி லிங்க் அட்ரஸ் காபி லிங்க் அட்ரஸ் now you sudo wz by using wz we can download star dot gz this is a almost like a compressed format like a zipped file star dot gz copy this line we are trying to download tomcat binary distribution tomcat tomcat binary distribution tomcat binary distribution downloading the auto work by using wcat go for ls earlier yeah. jdk downloaded now tomcat tar file download tomcat tar file got downloaded copy this downloaded tomcat folder name come on file name copy tomcat folder name sorry downloaded file name you sudo you star command xvf by using tar command we can uncompress by using tar command we can uncompress we got the compressed file tar file is a compressed file use the tar command to uncompress so you need to use some options so hyphen xvf hyphen xvf then whatever tar file name just to place the tar file name we already copied tar file name copy
copy this completely. Control C. Click and paste. It's completely uncompressed operation. Control L. Uncompressed operation. Now go for LS. There is a folder, folder created for the uncompressed operation. Folder got created for the uncompressed operation. Go to that folder, everyone. CD space above. Inside this folder, inside this folder, you can find bin folder and web apps folder. Go for real list. There is a bin folder. There is also web apps folder. Web apps folder is for a deployment purpose. Bin folder containing the commands to start and to stop. The commands to start and to stop. <clears throat> so once jar var file is ready, once the var file is ready, we'll deploy into the web apps folder. Now go to the bin folder to start the Tomcat server. Go to the bin folder. This also sudo. What is this? From the Apache folder, you need to trigger CD command. Go for CD space, then CD space. Bin. After going to there, Start up what is it? Start up dot is it? Copy. You can see what is the present working directory. We are not inside a bin. We are only in the Apache. Permission denied.
If you get the same message, first run sudo su, then cd bin. sudo space su <laughs> then cd command Now we are inside a bin folder, present working directory. So you can go for ls. Let me go for control l. You can see startup.sh, shutdown.sh. So while running any command, always advisable to start with a dot slash. It says like a current directory, dot slash, then start to, dot is it. I'm trying to run the Tomcat server, whichever installed in the EC2. Startup dot is it. Tomcat server start successfully. You can access the same from the browser. The default port number for Tomcat is 8080. You can able to access from the browser. So for that purpose, We need to give one permission in the AWS window. So go to the AWS window. Under current instance, Under current instance, come little down. You can see security. The current instance, so please cross check again whether our current instance is this or not. You can also check it out. You can see here. 3.3.3.1.2.1.5.6.7 Same. 2.1.5.6.7 Under security, go to security groups. Go to the security groups. Security groups. Under security groups, you can click on edit inbound rules, edit, edit inbound rules.
edit inbound rules add a new rule that new rule will be allowing to access any way any type of connection so click on add rule this is only for giving a permission to everybody from everywhere add rule you will be getting a second row add rule you are getting a second row under custom tcp select all traffic select all traffic so for permission purpose so tomcat server is running i need to access from the browser all traffic you can find one more custom click on drop down of the second custom in the same row go for any way ipv4 any way ipv4 anywhere ip v4 click on save rule that's all now we can able to access phone card server from any way how to access let me take the ip address this is the ip address colon 8080 whatever ip address you got public ip address Don't get server listening to eight zero eight zero. Your IP address, not my IP address. If you use my IP address, you will be getting my Don't get page. Control C. open a browser whatever tomcat started in the ec2 instance that we accessed from our local browser from any way your tomcat can be accessed now from any way in the internet just you need to provide your ip address that ip address will be mapping to one domain name that is a administrative set task ip address colon 8080 so with this tomcat also got up. all three softwares installed successfully started as well JDK installed, we checked with Java C command. MySQL installed, we also created a database with the name as Lara. Tomcat installed, started, we accessed from the browser. Now we need to develop Java full stack project to deploy inside this Tomcat server. let us move to the 
स्प्रिंग बूट डेवलपमेंट स्प्रिंग बूट डेवलपमेंट गुड स्टार्ट डॉट स्प्रिंग डॉट आई वो एवरीबॉडी राइट फ्रॉम द स्क्रैच आई एल शो यू I think everybody will have a enterprise edition of the Eclipse to develop a Spring Boot project. There are multiple ways are there to develop a Spring Boot project. I'm using Spring Initializer, Maven based. Maven based. Come little down. Specify. artifact id like a project name any project name so let me go for full stack project name itself i am giving a full stack so we have a tomcat server we wanted a var file not the jar file spring boot project name i am choosing as a full stack choose a var file type as a var type as a var now let us see the dependents web spring web is mandated spring web is mandatory this is one second one data jpa to interact with the database data jpa to interact with the database we don't require in memory databases we will be using mysql directly only these two dependencies spring web and data jpa they can generate you need to choose your eclipse workspace come on you need to choose eclipse workspace everybody in my system ws is the eclipse workspace eclipse workspace <laughs> now go to the location where application is there extract it
Try importing into Eclipse. Let me open the Eclipse. While opening the Eclipse, choose the correct to workspace in whichever Spring Boot project available. Download it. Choose the correct to workspace. I think you all know about workspaces, Eclipse, Spring Boot project. Click on launch. Try importing full stack project. File import. File import existing Maven project. So through browse, select a full stack. Go one more time. Yeah. This is the root of the project folder. Finish. In this full stack project, we have to use MySQL. We need to do small change in the pom.xml. Go to the pom.xml. I'll just take copy from other projects. MySQL driver, MySQL driver application required to interact with the MySQL. Open pom.xml by providing a simple dependency. Try adding this dependency everybody. In the pom.xml, MySQL connector application for the driver purpose. MySQL connector
This you can copy even from the internet also, but you'll be finding a lot of MySQL connectors. You may be getting a little confusion. You can just to develop this dependency. Just to save it. There is one more plugin is required, everybody. This plugin is for specifying what could be the bar file and also avoiding Tomcat while making a bundle. While making a bundle, avoiding Tomcat. Just to develop this much. One dependency and one plugin. Keep this dependency under dependency tags, plugin under plugins. One dependency and one plugin. Now, come to the properties file, everybody. In the properties file also, we need to modify something. Open the properties file. I'll just remove unnecessary comments. We created a 
डेटाबेस नेम एज ए लार इट इज कंप्लीटली माई स्क्यूल डेटाबेस सेटिंग in the properties file we need to configure mysql database we need to configure mysql database this is the database name this is the port number in a how local host is a current system so there are some properties you need to configure that Username is a root, password is a blank. Then Hibernate specific some configurations through dialect. We will be specifying what is the type of the database. Then DDL auto, then generated mapping. So these are only my skill purpose. so project is set up is ready try developing one simple entity one one table everybody right click on the package let me go for class name as a person at the rate entity first name Last name and email ID. Only three fields shall be keeping. I'll make email ID as a primary key. I'm not using any auto-generated. Let us make email ID as a primary key. for simplicity purpose i'm not using lombok try developing setters and getters three fields are there try developing setters and getters entity class is ready take the class name of entity try developing a repository right click on the package go to the repository interface public repository finish extends thread repository primary key data type is a string is a email primary key primary key data type is a string is a email
that so go to the controller i'm not developing a service layer directly i'm developing a controller let's go for person controller is to controller request to maple you can develop a service layer but here very simple only one table single table service layer doesn't require directly you can interact from the controller itself private person repository auto wire one more cross origin to access from any way पब्लिक जस्ट यू से person repository dot save the person it should be a post mapping I'll try to load all the persons. get back to it i'll give five more minutes time here two apis we are developing one for posting a person other for reading all the persons so we need to develop angular code to make a call to post mapping of person get mapping of person post mapping of person get mapping of person server side development got over for a person table with two apis two apis one is a post api posting a person second one is a get reading all the persons in the form of a iterable let us move to the client side development i think everybody having angular setup 
I mentioned very clearly like what are the prerequisites. Let us create a new angular project. I'm using project name as a full stack only. NG space, new space, full stack. NG space, new space, full stack. Everybody. This command. You can go for angular routing or you can avoid. Anyhow, our project is very simple. We don't require angular routing. For the end. Then go for CSS only, not the advanced type of CSS. It may take two, three minutes time. Go inside the project, whatever created, CD space. Go inside a project. Open in the VS Code. Open the project in the VS Go inside a SRC. There is a default app component. In the app component itself, I'll implement. We need to call two APIs. Both the APIs I'll be calling from the app component itself. First and foremost step, go to the app module. Go to the app module. App module. We require some modules in the app module. Very important. Forms module. You can see line number two, it's automatically imported. If at all in your IDE, import is not happening automatically, you need to type the line number two. Sometimes it's happening. If you are using first time, import will not be happening automatically 
to control space bar. You need to explicitly code like a line number two. Reactive forms module. Now you can see in my ID also, not imported, reactive forms module. I need to import explicitly. I'm copying the class name. Forms module, reactive forms module, both are from the same library. Observe line number two. Forms module, reactive forms module. One more module is required, HTTP client module. HTTP client module. Here also, it's not importing. We need to import explicitly. Import This is from different library Angular common slash HTTP. This is the library. Please observe line number 2 and 3 for import, then line number 14, 15, 16. These three modules we require to submit a form to the server side. In order to submit a form to the server side, we require three modules, forms module, reactive forms module, HTTP client module. Try importing, first two are from angular slash forms, second one angular common HTTP, angular common HTTP. Now, come to the app component.ts, app component.ts. Person. Form two. Mm. 
Persons polar in Let's go for constructor. Farm buildings should be imported from the same HTTP client should be imported Angular common HTTP. So please capture two lines of import. I define a person and also persons. <laughs> person is equal to form builder dot group. You need to specify the group of attributes through JSON object. Please try importing line number two and three. In the beginning, VS Code is not providing auto suggestion for the imports. You have to code explicitly. Then this dot person is equal to Farm builder dot group. First name is a one field. Farm control. This also we need to import. Only first time it is happening. <laughs> okay. 
So don't do any typo errors. Email ID. So if you wanted, you can cross check your entity class. First name, last name, email ID. A simple form with three fields. A very simple form with the totally three fields. Let me develop two methods, one for saving, client dot post dot. Posting to the person API, posting to the person API. For the API, we mentioned the person only. What you have to post? The JSON object from Please call this read all also from the constructor body. Save method is for posting person object. Post. Posting a person object. Save method. Read all the method. Reading all the persons. Once the posting is got over, read all methods should call. Even by loading also, read all method should call. From the constructor body, I'm calling read all method. As soon as posting card over, then also I'm calling read all. Read all method, read all method. It is for reading purpose.
Similar to save method, try defining one more method that is read all. You need to call with a this. Please observe everybody. This dot read all. I'll modify content of the read all from the read all. We'll make a get request. Read all. We'll make a get request. Come to the read all method. Go to the get to the same URL. Assign R1 to the persons. So whatever we are getting from the server side, same I am assigning to persons. All these angular steps are very simple for us. We have seen a lot of development. Two APIs we are calling from the component class programming portion got over. Programming portion got over in the Angular. Let's move to the template HTML. First name, last name, email ID. Let me verify once again. What is my NDD class? Person class. Email ID. Yes, absolutely correct. Go to the HTML. Remove this complete content. Whatever default content is there, completely remove. I just to display all the persons. So, no need of this one. Directly you can try reading. Mm 
listing of persons. header row then for the data row Let person of persons. This is for displaying all the records. NG for let person of persons. Now define a form. Form group is equal to person NG subject is equal to same that is equal to text. Form control name is equal to first name. Last name. Line. Label is missing.
Available persons, I'm printing in the table. To add a new person, there is a simple form. In a single page itself, Vote, post and load. Through a table, we are printing all the available persons. Through a form, we are submitting. That's all. Take the angular code. Keep inside a server side. One small command is there. For building purpose, please run this command ng build. Configuration to the production. Angular code we are building for the production. Type in anonymous status. Uh, I don't know. Somebody is talking from the online. What is your query? So, whatever Angular code we developed to make a call to two APIs. That completely done and even build also got over. Build also got over. Please observe, this is the command you have to trigger in order to build angular code. In order to build angular code, 
एनजी बिल्ड कॉन्फ़िगरेशन रक्षा नाउ यू कैन गुड द एंगुलर प्रोजेक्ट everybody full stack project you can see disk to folder inside a disk to folder there is a full stack go inside this complete content we have to copy into the eclipse this is the client side code in the disk folder after build after build in the disk folder copy copy entire content come to the eclipse everybody under resources static place all the files in the static folder of resources in the static folder of resources paste it complete angular code after building after building after build after build take the content from the disk keep inside a static folder after keeping inside a static folder open index.html there is a index.html in the index.html you need to do one small step change href is equal to dot there is a forward slash make this as a dot forward slash now client side server side both the code available in the spring boot application spring boot application containing server side code and even client side code also now it is a full stack project which contains both server side and the client side now this we have to build from the eclipse building from the eclipse save all the files right click on full stack in the eclipse right click on full stack in the eclipse go to run as select maven build select maven build under goals type install under goals under goals type install so come little down there is a checkbox for skip tests 
you need to select skip tests. You need to select skip tests. Click on run. Apply and run. Right click on your project. Go to Maven build. In the Maven build under goals. Install. Skip tests. Click on run. Build takes some time. It may take four, five minutes time. While building, it is downloading several dependent jar files, whichever required to make a var file. <laughs> So we are getting a build success. I'll wait here for two more minutes. It may take some time. In your systems, it may be taking some time. Guys, if you are saying build success, then you can see refresh the project. You can see the target fold, refresh the project. Go inside a target folder. Expand a target folder. You can see full stack var file. This var file we need to upload to the Tomcat, whichever running in the EC2. Whatever var file is there, that var file we need to upload. Yeah. To the Tomcat, whichever is running the EC2. Let me show how we can upload. Again, come to the Mobax, reconnect. In the Mobax, try reconnecting. Check it out which connection. 
see here already in the ls in the current directory three folders are there so this is the correct instance where we installed all the applications now you can see upload come on there is a upload upload click on upload arrow go to the your eclipse workspace my eclipse workspace is a ws go inside go to full stack project in the eclipse workspace full stack target under target you can find full stack dot var full stack dot var select full stack it takes some time let it upload it uploads it uploads to the current user folder it will be uploading to the current user folder file is uploading var file upload so upload arrow mark top left you can observe my mouse movement it is the button to upload uploading got once uploaded you can see in the left to frame full stack you can also check in the ls you can see full stack dot var 
in the ls full stack dot var copy this name full stack dot var full stack dot var now everybody first type sudo yes you now you can run all the commands without sudo copy the current file to the tomcat web apps folder tomcat web apps folder cp command cp paste cp full stack dot var space apache through tab you can get apache slash web apps web apps folder is for deployment bin folder is for we starting starting and jabbing is a bin folder web apps folder i am copying full stack dot var to the web apps folder copying full stack dot var to the web apps folder this sent it We need to copy it to the web apps folder. We need to copy into the web apps folder. Now we need to restart the Tomcat server. After deploying, after copying, after copying, we need to restart. Go to the cd apache slash bin. apache slash bin the center apache slash bin then everybody you can see what is the present working directory and even ls this is the place where we can stop the tomcat server and stop the tomcat start and stop we reach to bin folder on um, guys in order to stop in order to stop we require a shutdown i'm going for control n to clear shut down 
डॉट एस एच सेट इट डाउन डॉट एस एच डॉट स्लैश अब तू गोइंग द बिन फोल्डर फर्स्ट गो डॉट बिन फोल्डर टैप द डोम कार्ड सर्वर नाउ स्टार्ट इट स्टार्ट अप एंड शट डाउन Start up and shut down. Don't get restarted. After restarting the Tomcat, it is advisable to check the log file whether any exceptions are there or not. Everybody, after starting, go to the log file and check any exceptions. Please follow me. Cd space dot dot slash logs. It is a folder in the Tomcat. Cd space dot dot slash logs. Logs is a folder like a bin and web apps. Logs. You can go for ls. You can find Catalina dot out. That Catalina dot out is a log file. So in the Eclipse, whatever we are developing, we are seeing all the exceptions in the console. Same console kind of file is a Catalina dot out. Let's open this with a cat command. Cat space. cat space catalina dot out catalina dot out check any errors no errors deployment procedure very success There was one error. Don't know what it is. No problem. Now, go to the browser. Same Tomcat port to num. Sorry, EC EC to instance port to number. Uh, EC to instance IP address. Tomcat port to number slash the project name. That is full stack. The project name full stack. Eight zero eight zero slash full stack. You can see one form is there and table headers are there because of no data. First name, last name, email ID. Let me enter. First name as A B C, last name as X Y Z, email ID. Click on submit. Submitted data displaying in the browser A B C one, X Y Z one is another record. 
let's go for Mohan. Rabu or at the rate or dot com. So if you are getting anything, I'll show once again how that security rule can be created. There may be chance of committing a mistake on security rule. Go to the AWS window. Everybody. <laughs> Under your current instance, go to the security. Under your current instance, go to the security. You can find security groups. Click on security group. Guys, everybody, in the security group, edit inbound rules. Edit inbound rules. This rule I created, that is first one. Let me delete. I'll show you once again. Go to the add rule, everybody. Add rule, add rule. Under custom TCP, select all traffic. Select all traffic. There is one more custom in the same line. One more custom in the same line. Go to the drop down. You need to select anywhere IPv4. We use only IPv4, not IPv6. That is different. Maybe. Network administrators will be knowing IPv6. We'll use always IPv4. Anywhere IPv4. That's all. Click on save rule. So we are allowing our EC2 instance any kind of traffic from anywhere. Any kind of traffic like a HTTP traffic or SSH, whatever it may be, all types of traffics and anyway. Click on save rule. Click on save rule. The total full stack application, development and deployment, development and deployment completely got to work. Except your local softwares. I already said like you should have a Eclipse and Angular softwares. This session is very important. Most of the people finding a difficulty on the entire procedure for the full stack development and deployment. I just developed only two APIs. One is a post, second one is a read all. But the entire procedure right from the scratch. My sincere advice, please go through these type of sessions again and again. Repeat again and again. Finally, after done, so stop your instances in the EC2. Stop completely. Go to the EC2 instances. In my case, four instances are there. I'll select three instances which I don't want.
all three instances i'll stop and terminate i don't want you also stop and terminate and redevelop once again whenever you want it so three i don't want go for instance state stop instance state stop instance stop you can see instance state is stopping after stopping you can terminate if you don't want further so one time two times you may not be very comfortable better minimum 3 4 times okay This is all about the entire session. Each and every step I show. Please practice multiple times. Enjoy, Karu. All the best.